the eyes have it. I therefore call on government order of the day number 17. Victims of Crime Reform Bill interrupted debate on first reading. I acknowledge the Honourable Member Charles Chevelle. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, New Zealand um, has some way to go before uh, appropriately catching up with other jurisdictions in the way that it deals with people who are caught up through no fault of their own in the criminal justice system. <clears throat> I instance Victoria, a very uh, comparable jurisdiction to ours in terms of wealth and population and cultural background in many ways. And I also instance the Victims of Crime Assistance Tribunal that they operate in Victoria. I was fortunate in 2007 to get the opportunity as one of the select committee exchanges, part of the, one of the select committee exchanges that this parliament operates from time to time, to be able to go and observe the Victims of Crime Assistance Tribunal in action. Uh, now, it was an interesting trip, I have to tell the House, uh, because the National Party members of the committee, Chris Finlayson, Chris Ockenvoll and Nicky Wagner, decided in one of those endearing little stunts that parliamentarians decide to pull from time to time to boycott the trip, protesting against travel on the taxpayer. So, um, yes, they were living in the past. Mr Carter's quite right. But the... Um, the trip was interesting on another front, and that's because we had the, Māori, or the then Māori Party member, Hone Harawera, with us. But he decided to uh, go up to the Northern Territory and have a look at the uh, intervention that was going on there at the time. So in the end, there was Lynn Pillay, who gave such an excellent valedictory speech earlier on as chair of the committee. Uh, there was, I think, Anne Hartley, the other Labour member, and there was Nandor Tanshos and me. And we met with the uh, Deputy Chair of the Victims of Crime Assistance Tribunal. We met with uh, a number of lawyers who had interaction with that tribunal. We met with councillors who were attached to the tribunal. And we learnt about the very comprehensive regime that Victoria has put in place uh, to try and help people who have become the victims of crime. Two of the aspects of the regime in Victoria that really struck me were, first of all, that victims of crime have an automatic entitlement to compensation. Uh, and that compensation is designed to try to make them whole for the, uh, the crime that they have suffered. For example, if there's been a burglary, uh, then one of the powers that the tribunal has got is to order uh, payment for the replacement of the locks on the home or the broken windows. Uh, that the homeowner or tenant has suffered uh, as a result of the burglary. It is about making the victim whole again after having suffered what they've suffered. Now, to an extent, we have some of this system reflected already in New Zealand in the accident compensation regime, but it's not a comprehensive system directed at, uh, at repairing victims. It's, uh, it's by chance compensation if... Uh, people have an ACC entitlement by reason of having suffered personal injury by accident. The other thing that really struck me about the Victorian regime was the fact that the tribunal held hearings. And so the victim got a chance to go along to a, a safe uh, judicial process and tell their story. Tell, them, tell the uh, magistrate, the presiding magistrate, as it is in, in Victoria, what it was like to go through the experience they went through. The magistrate could order counselling, the magistrate could order compensation. And that was indeed the default position under the uh, VOCAT system. It's a therapeutic approach to the experience that victims have in the system. Now, sir, this legislation would replace, or at least uh, in many ways update, and amend the Victims' Rights Act 2002, a very good piece of legislation uh, that the last Labor government enacted through this parliament. And that legislation itself replaced the 
Victims of Offences Act 1987, which was really the first time, again, under a Labour government, that this Parliament comprehensively addressed the rights, the needs and the interests of people who have been, as I said earlier, caught up through no fault of their own in the criminal justice system. I do have reservations about whether this updating goes far enough. I do wonder whether we are still going to be behind uh, jurisdictions like Victoria once we've gone through this exercise. And I have some other reservations, frankly, about uh, the way in which we are approaching the debate around victims. And again, I want to refer back to the words that we heard from Lynn Pillay earlier. She was uh, a well-respected chair of the Justice and Electoral Committee for three years. She presided over the uh, inquiry into victims' rights, which uh, in many ways has led to the legislation, uh, or at least the officials' recommendations that led to the legislation that we're considering now. But I do want to recall one thing she said, and that is that there is a bipartisan approach needed on the issue of the interests of victims. And I do also want to recall the warning that we received from the Chief Justice a year or two ago on the increasing uh, rhetoric, the increasingly shrill rhetoric, around trying to jam victims in to our criminal justice system. Our system doesn't have a natural place for the victim. The old adversarial system consists of the Crown uh, and the defendant. And to try to graft a third player into the system without very, very careful thought is going to risk doing things to the system by way of unintended consequences that I don't think probably anybody in this House uh, would particularly find desirable. And I don't also think that there is any merit in attaching a consideration of the rights of victims to rhetoric around vindictiveness in our criminal justice system. Uh, frankly, no end of the political spectrum uh, or the debate on criminal justice has a monopoly on, on caring about uh, the rights and interests of victims. And if we allow that sort of rhetoric to engage and invade the debate, uh, then, frankly, I don't think we're doing victims any great service. I also think it's a shame that this legislation, which would update an act that is now nine years old, is only coming to the House in the last week of this Parliament. For all the rhetoric about victims, this legislation can, go, can possibly go nowhere until February at the earliest. So I think it is appropriate to reflect again on the, on the rhetoric around victims' interests and whether or not it's actually bona fide rhetoric, or whether it is simply words. But, sir, this legislation will come back to the next Parliament, and Labor will evaluate it carefully, either in opposition or in government, and we will make sure that as we, uh, as a Parliament, seek to advance uh, the victim's agenda, we do it in a way that is balanced and respectful of the way other parts of the system work. 